I find it somewhat difficult uh, on all of these uh, Memorial Days uh, to, to speak because I served in the service myself and, uh, and I really I know what it is. This past April I was awarded by the Department of Veterans Affairs a certificate for voluntary service and they gave me credit for 11,305 hours and 11 years of service. So, this was uh, given by the Department of Veterans Affairs and of course signed by the director of uh, Hines Hospital there in Chicago, Dr. John Cummins. And of course, excuse me, I see suffering before me every day and I know what it is, so I find it very difficult. If you want to turn in your Bible to the 20th chapter of Exodus, and I'd like for us to look at the 8th verse. Giving that tribute to the flag sort of reminds me that we have a tendency to forget. <coughs> we need to remember. This verse reads, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now a big question may be asked is why preach on the Ten Commandments? Well, another good question to ask, do you want to see America delivered from greed, from racism, from abortion, police brutality? alcoholism and drugs, child abuse, and the destruction of the American family. I think that the Ten Commandments holds a secret to just that. Amen. Another good question, are you tired of seeing this nation swim on the secular uh, humanist uh, sewer, controlled by politicians, by the media, by the ACLU, by so-called spiritual leaders who are nothing more than pigs in a parlor claiming to be spiritual leaders and actually practicing paganism and rejecting the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Ten Commandments and the Word of God I think is God's penicillin Amen. for secular humanism. Now to consider the benefits of the commandments if all of America would start doing the commandments of God, it would be the end of AIDS. It would be the end of venereal disease, drive-by shootings, police brutality, pornography, triple X-rated theaters, and divorce. It would be the end of a national crime explosion. It would be the end of short time prison terms and early releases of rapists and murderers, drug pushers and peddlers to kill again, to rape again, to peddle drugs again. The commandments of God's word hold the secret to just this. And time is running out. It's been a couple of thousand years since Christ was here. Time is running out. He is coming again. And if Christians do not rise up and stand up and speak out in these days in which we live, then you are watching a nation die before your very eyes. I believe that we can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. We, the people of the Lord, can take this nation back to the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. God called us to occupy till he returns, and that simply means to continue doing what I have started, witnessing and telling of his love.
for all. We can take this nation back to God one day at a time, one person at a time, one home at a time. I believe this morning that we can do it. And I trust that today we will begin to realize that the only way that we can be spiritually and physically well is to honor God's Word. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remembering the Sabbath day to keep it holy tells me two things. It tells me that in the beginning that God made it a holy day. And it also tells me and it forms me that God knows that man is very forgetful. We are forgetful. You've heard of the Chinaman who boasts about his good memory. He added, but my forgetting ability is even better yet. Three old ladies having a tea party. And one of them said, I'm getting so forgetful, I go to the refrigerator. And said, I open the door and I stand there and wonder, did I come to bring food or did I come to take food? The other one said, I'm getting so forgetful, I stand at the, at the, at the stairway and said, I don't know if I just came down or if I'm going up. <laughs> the third one said, well, thank God, nothing like this has ever bothered me. <laughs> and she reached over and she knocked on wood and said, would one of you please see who is at the door? <laughs> Israel certainly forgot God. Going back in their history, they forgot that the death angel spared the children of Israel. They forgot that God divided the Red Sea and that they crossed on dry land. And they forgot how they rejoiced when they were looking over the Red Sea when the waters closed in and the Egyptian army was being destroyed. They forgot how God, how God guided them by a, a cloud of smoke by the day and a pillar of fire during the night. Soon they forgot how God sent plagues upon Egypt, turned the water into blood. They forgot about all the frogs and the lice and the flies, the sick livestock, the boils, the hailstorms, the locusts and the darkness over the land, and finally the death of the firstborn of Egypt. They soon forgot. Soon they forgot how God provided for them. Soon they forgot how that God made the water that was bitter, sweet. They complained and they grumbled at Moses. And they said, you brought us out here to die of hunger. Soon they forgot how God rained down from heaven manna in the morning and how quickly they forgot how God gave them food and water protection and protection in their travels. They said to Aaron, Make us gods that will go before us. Said Moses, the panhead, who led us out here to starve to death in the wilderness, said he's forsaken us. And all in the world Moses had done had gone up into the mountains and he was praying and waiting before God perform another miracle. He spent 40 days up there, so I guess it's no wonder they thought they had been forsaken. But they cried out to Aaron and said, Make us a golden calf so that we might worship. We forget. It's so easy for us to forget. We are sick. The pastor anoints us with oil. He prays over us. God heals us. Then we show our appreciation on Sunday morning by going to the ballpark, or maybe even going fishing. Well, you can't go fishing when you're sick. So we lose our job, we lose our business. It's failing. We can't make ends meet. How do we pay our rent? Time for another car payment. House payment is due. We have no money. <coughs> The interest just eats us up. 
We just have to meet these obligations or else. So what on earth are we going to do? Try God. He's a good source. So we call upon God. We lay, he lays it upon Jesus who supplies all of our need. Someone lends a helping hand. We make a lot of promises to pay back. And out of the goodness of our hearts, we promptly forget. And we go on our merry way. Remember. Remember that you would be a homeless street person this morning had not someone had sympathy and mercy. We come to the house of God with our lives twisted by sand. On the verge of divorce. Suffering from alcoholism, from drugs living in deep depression. God has mercy upon us, and he recreates our lives, and he sets the joy bells of heaven ringing within. We show our appreciation on the Lord's Day with a cigar in one hand, and a beer can in the other can, hand, and a TV show in front of our eyes. And we say that this is my day to rest, it's my day to wash the car. I must trim the bushes. I have to cut the grass. Well, I want you to know that this is not your day. This day belongs to the Lord. The Lord made it in the beginning, and don't you ever forget it. Hebrews 10 and 25. It reads like this, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, and so much the more as we see the day approaching. Two thousand years have gone by. The Lord said, I'm coming again. I believe this morning that his coming is nearer than that day. Amen. He could come this day. True. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. In Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter in verse 12, it said to keep the day, the Sabbath day, to sanctify it as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. This is not something that preachers bark about all the time. This is a commandment of the Almighty God. And when we stand before God in the judgment day, we have to give an account of what we have done with the Lord Jesus Christ and the commandments that he has given. If we love the Lord, we're going to keep his commandments. So remember, and keep it in mind, don't forget, if you don't have enough victory in your soul to come to God's house on the Sabbath day, it's a sense you will not have enough victory to go to God's house on Resurrection Day. Now I know that uh, you have a photographic memory. You just simply forget to put film in the camera. There's really only one way that I know of to remember your wife's birthday. Forget it just one time. <laughs> we forget our names. I said that coming over in the car. Forget our names. I said, of course. How many of you have ever written a check and you had to look up into the corner to see what name to write down at the bottom? <laughs> It's so easy. <clears throat> we forget our friends' faces. Someone walks up and he greets us. He shakes our head. Do you remember me? And you will stand there just exactly like you saw him yesterday. And he's gone. I've seen that person someplace. Who in the world is that person? We forget. We even forget our wedding vows. One man was telling a friend. He said, I just walked out on my wife. Is that right? How did she take it? I said, well, it's a funny thing. We've been together all these years. And said, I've always known that she could scream to the high heaven. But he said, I never dreamed that she could do cartwheels at the same time. <laughs> we forget the difference between right and wrong. Teenager was complaining about his mother. He said, I cough one time. She thinks I have tuberculosis. 
that I have a headache one time. She thinks I have a brain tumor. That I forget to tell the truth only one time. She thinks I'm destined for the White House. <laughs> America has certainly forgotten God. You can't read the Bible. You can't pray. They've thrown the Ten Commandments out the window. The president, he wants homosexuals in the military. Homosexual fem feminist to run the highest offices in the land. <coughs> it's unlawful to pray, unlawful to read the Bible. America has forgotten God. Our people would rather go to the ballpark or, or visit their Aunt Sally than to go to church on the Lord's Day. And so to make it more attractive, I have come up with a no excuse Sunday. Now one day your building is going to be more beautiful than it is now. But the children said a moment ago that the building is not the church. It's the people. So if you get people into the church on the Lord's Day, this is my formula. And I think if I had it to do over, I might try to follow this policy in reality. I would put army cops in the basement for those who say it's my day to sleep in. I would furnish steel helmets for those who think that the roof would cave in if I go to church. I'd furnish blankets for those who think that the church is too cold. And then I'd furnish fans for those who have hot flashes every Sunday morning about 9.45. <laughs> I'd furnish hearing aids for those who think that the preacher speaks too softly. And I'd furnish cotton for those who think he is too loud. I would uh, furnish scorecards for those who would want to keep track of how many hypocrites are present. So you would feel at home, I would put your relatives' pictures upon the altar. And I'd furnish TV dinners for those uh, who can't go to church and cook. And in one part of the sanctuary, it would be devoted to trees and grass for those who see God only in nature. And then finally, I would decorate the entire church with Christmas poinsettias and Easter lilies for those who have never seen the church in any other fashion. Sunday comes only once every seven days. And what is it that we are to remember about the Sabbath? The Lord said, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. You might remember that you were not made for the Sabbath, but that the Sabbath was made for you. Jesus said so himself in Mark, the second chapter, and verse 27. And of course, the Sabbath day did not begin with the Ten Commandments. It began with the creation. God worked six days and he rested on the seventh. A big question then is, did God rest because that he was tired? And the answer is always no. Our God never grows weary. You may call upon him in the morning, in the noon, and in the night. He is always present and always there. God, he rested as a divine example for all humanity. And the example is this, that our minds and our bodies, they need rest. This is ordered by God and supernatural strength. It comes from supernatural rest. Isaiah, rather I should say Psalms, the 62nd chapter, it says that God has spoken once, Twice have I heard this, 
that power belongs to God. I happen to know that it's a medical fact that you may sleep and not get rest. Many nights I have slept very soundly, but I have come to life in the morning even tireder than I was when I lay down at night. Rest comes from God and not from pills, not from medication, not from cheap booze, from drugs, but rest comes from God. Isaiah, the 47th chapter, and verse 29 said, He giveth power to the faint. They who have no might, He increaseth their strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When thou passest through the water, I will be with thee. That's the comforting thought this morning. I will be with you all the way, even to the end of the world. I said through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. It is in the house of the Lord that we are charged up with superpower of the Holy Ghost. And then you are able to run through a troop and you can leap over a wall. So let's go to church. Let's go to the house of God on the Lord's day. And let's get super powered up. And let God rise and let his enemy be destroyed. Amen. Let us, in other words, take a stand for our God. Amen. Let the world know whose side that we are on. A child of God who is charged up with the power of God reminds me of that little pink rabbit, you know, that you see on your television screen. When all of the others have fallen over, still going, still going, still going. And let me say that God's power is better than all of the health spas that they have in Texas. It's even better than Hot Springs, Arkansas. And I'm here to inform you that God's power is better than Mayo Clinic. Our God can do anything. Amen. Amen. And we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. And so the day that the people enter the door of the house of the Lord and they go to the altar of God and they confess their ungodly sins to God and turn from their wicked and their ungodly ways, it's the day of their deliverance. This is the day that hearts are mended, that have been broken. It's the day that alcoholics are set free. It's the day that drug addicts are set free. It's the day that marriages are restored. It's the day that torn apart families come together once again. It's the day that the angels rejoice in the glory world. For whomsoever the Son shall set free, shall be free indeed. Matthew 11:28. Jesus himself, he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And he said, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. And this is what we need, the soul rest. We need rest of our inner, inner man. Rest of the body. We rest at the end of the row, so to speak. We need soul rest this morning. And only God provides this. So, my message then for all America this day, 
would be remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Amen. And God bless you is my prayer. Amen. Thank you, Brother West. We appreciate that so much. Sister West, would you want to come back to the piano for a moment? And uh, I'd like for us to sing uh, page 268. Revive us. Thine eyesight, Lord, that we might...